welcome back to Spotlight. Uh, I'd like to welcome my, uh, my two new guests, Stacey Stowe James, social, social worker, family, children, and protective services, social development, and Sarah Hussein Bazaar, special education teacher at the BBI Autism Center, Social Development Disabilities Service Unit. Welcome to Spotlight. Thank you for having us, as always. Good. Child abuse, let's start with child abuse. Yes. Uh, this is Child Abuse Awareness Month. Yes. And Autism Month. And Autism Month. So that's April. It's yes. It's been a month. Actually, um, Autism Center joined us on the Social Development Department in January. Mm -hmm. And so we shared a month now with the Autism Center. Uh, we were doing some activities with them in previous years. But since they are now under us, we've joined together. We have one calendar and we share the month. Um, so yes, it's Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness and Autism Month. Okay. So we're winding down now because we're in the last week. Yeah, so what have you been doing all month? Well, we've been promoting through media, through radio. We've had radio appearances and TV appearances. We've done some school appearances. We did a training earlier in the month with the early child childhood providers um, that went very well we had we trained over 60 persons within the preschool and daycare centers and talking to them really about them being mandated reporters now on the children and young persons act and what they are required to do um, as childhood providers if they suspect that a child is being harmed or okay. ill-treated and so what, what what's involved in that training uh, detection right we gave them an overview of what our situation is here locally we're going to talk to you about that a little bit later on as well as we give them some signs and and things that they need to look out for those behavioral signs those signs um, those physical signs so at times you know there are signs physically and sometimes you know those behaviors that children may exhibit that would um, indicate that they might be harmed what are we looking for um, some of those signs, like for instance, with physical abuse, bike marks um, w would be one of the physical signs you look for. Um, extensive bruising and stuff like that, behavioral signs you would look for. Um, if a child shies away from a particular adult, um, they don't want to go home or um, they want to always stay in school, they might show up another sign for something like neglect. They might show up to school very early in the morning, stay very, one of the students to always stay late, um, come to school, not prepared for school, not well groomed, um, never have sufficient lunch or snacks. So we just went through each particular type with them, mm -hmm. um, talked to them about the different types, what those definitions were, as well as those signs. We looked at um, our protocol that you know that we signed, we're very proud of now, yes. um, that we signed along with the Minister of Education, or Minister, Honorable Skelton, um, the Premier, the DPP's Office, and the Commissioner of Police, that now mandates all agencies who work with children to work together to make sure that we are working towards one common goal to make sure that we are keeping our children safe. Once they've disclosed that they've been hurt, we make sure that we're working together to help that family through that um, tumultuous process. And how are we eliminating the fear and the stigma? You know, sometimes you know, persons don't want to talk about it. Uh, children, uh, the, the adults in the family, say the mother, for mm -hmm. example, don't want to talk about the stepfather or the father abusing the child, uh, you know, because of the stigma or they're afraid of some repercussion, uh, and violence, and so on. Uh, how are we, how, how is the protocol dealing or helping those persons to come forward and protect it? We're educating. That's why we're here with you, Cromwell. We're educating through trainings. We're educating through our awareness campaigns. We have um, the Drive Blue, Wear Blue, we're going to talk about in a minute on Friday. You know, we're keeping persons inform about what is happening here. If you look at the slides that I provided to you, the pie chart, we continue to show persons that in our BVI, we're not talking about things that is happening somewhere else. In our BVI, we have sexual abuse being the most prevalent type. We continue to see our highest type year after year, right? We continue to inform the public about what we're doing. We continue to strengthen our systems. We have the protocol now coming out of the protocol we have um, a child abuse investigative team now. So we have persons who sit every quarter 
and look at all these cases that these children have disclosed or persons disclosed that I think that this child might be, you know, a victim. And we look at those cases and see whether or not we have um, information enough to prosecute criminally or it is that we need to put support services in the home to assist these parents with parenting classes or, or whatever. Um, we see that not just our girls are being affected by sexual abuse of all the types, but we have our boys as well being affected as well. Last year alone, um, we had 83 reports. The year before, we had a significantly lower number. Um, so we're seeing that persons, we continue to educate, we continue to so a rate ask of the awareness. A, a, a growth rate of increase uh, of, of Last year, we saw spike, abuse yes. Of boys? Last or year we had last year we had eighty three reports reported to social development department. We had eighty three reports of children being hurt. Right mm. of those eighty three reports, we had thirty two of those being sexual abuse alone. Mm -hmm. We had both boys and girls being affected by sexual abuse. So it's important we have a responsibility to get the information out to the public to say to the public, listen. It's not going away. We need to keep doing what we're doing. We need to educate our kids. We need to continue going into the schools. Um, Sarah and her colleagues had a family fund day to open up the month. We participated by doing our puppet shows so the kids and, you know, had it geared towards body safety. We educating our kids, we educating our parents, letting them know now. We have legislation that mandates you if you suspect that a child is being hurt, immediate family members have a duty now to report that matter to the police or social development. All the way down to cousins, mother, father, aunt, uncle, um, sister, brother, cousins, as well as anybody who's working with children. So we're informing persons about the importance and doing their role and doing their part in keeping our children safe. Have we, are we having any success though? I mean, is, is, the, is the rate continue to grow? Uh, you're, doing a lot, you're doing a lot. I mean, you, all the things you just outlined there, all the things that's being put in place is a lot. But are we having, are we having success? Are we making some... some, I, some I, I, I've heard some examples of, of older men and younger girls and so on, but I haven't heard some real hard-hitting examples being made of uh, men abusing boys, for example, uh, women abusing girls, you know, homosexuality, uh, pedophilia, uh, you know, the hardcore stuff. I'm not hearing of, of, of uh, those, those types of violent actions taken against the children being played out in court, severe punishment being meted out. What is the deterrent? Uh, you know, what well, success are we having? One of, one of the things, of course, you wouldn't hear about all 83 cases because right. we have to protect our clients. Um, privacy, confidentiality is paramount for mm -hmm. us. Um, and some of the cases are not prosecutable offenses. And I know I might offend persons like that. So persons might report something, but when police and social development responds, the matter may not be substantiated to a point where there's a criminal act has happened. Maybe there needs to be some support services in place for the family. And then on the back side, remember when we talked about strengthening those policies, some of all legislation that we have still sitting on our books, unfortunately, it's unfortunate for me to say, but it's, it's factual, it's archaic. So we have our um, legislation that talks about engaging in sexual contact with a girl under the age of 16 or under the age of 13 commits an offense and on some reconviction, you know, have these different fines. It is still gender bias. And so we are working, we're making recommendations to the ministry, ministry making recommendations, you know, to AG chambers and, and so forth to change, do some legislative reform, right, to, mm -hmm. in order to make sure that those matters are not gender bias. So we're working behind the scenes. We have a lot of, we've made some significant strides, but we have some more some work some to do. To go. Yes. So you have some campaigns, you got a real men campaign. Yes. Uh, is that, 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 that would be going for a while. Right. That's still what, we, what we wanted to do this year is to change the focus a bit and recognize that the role of men in protecting our children and trying to prevent child abuse the role of men in all statuses, the role of men in the church, the role of men 
work role as men as fathers and to encourage you know all men in the fight in protecting our children so one of the things we've done is we've partnered with nine or ten men in a community and you'll see um, those commercials coming out as the year go by because child abuse prevention doesn't stop at the end of April and so we've kind of tried to denounce that whole cultural norm that we have men with different women men dating minor girls or high schoolers um, so we, we do a lot of the campaigns men you know uh, abusing alcohol and drugs and and try to promote healthy male relationships in supporting our families and strengthening our families. So that is one of the things we're working behind the scenes with and hopefully we could get that push get that roll out at in, the in, end. In, in, right. And, and have get a, that a, out. a more uh, sustained uh, campaign of awareness throughout the year. Right. Because throughout a, the year. a lot of times we just hear it on, on, on radio during, or and, and TV public eye. Right. Uh, yeah. And we want to we push it past month. April. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, it needs to be a consistent exactly. flow of information and education. Yes. And it's good to see you. Always but good I to know, see you. I um, know Sarah is over there um, ready to, uh, to talk about autism. Uh, Sarah, first of all, autism is a relatively new phenomenon, I think, in the BVI. Um, we, he we heard about it in other places, but we don't think of it as really taking uh, root in the BVI until maybe a year or two ago, uh, Stacey, you might correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, so tell us, what, what is autism? <laughs> well, thank you for having us, first of all. This is a great platform that we can talk about issues that are affecting our community. And autism has been, has been on the islands for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Now it's more often talked about because Recently, we've opened the BVI Autism Center about three years ago, almost three years ago. October will mark three years. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're on the social development and talking about the case of um, abuse. Mm -hmm. We have children, unfortunately, that are special needs and are nonverbal, and that's even harder to detect abuse and requires much more in-depth investigation and is more prone to abuse and they are more much more prone, prone to, to neglect and abuse yes. because they're differently abled they may seem different to their peers frustration to their families what they have to go through every single day with a child with disabilities mm. and um, but first of all autism it's a neurological disorder that affects communication and that affects behavior mm -hmm. as well as speech and social and emotional interaction with their regular peers and typical peers. Um, with autism, they're very bright, bright children. They have great strength and skills and talents. And mm -hmm. it's called a spectrum, the autism spectrum disorder, because they have varying abilities and skills. Mm -hmm. So when you meet a child with autism, you only meet that one child with autism, regardless if they share the same diagnosis. Mm. So you, you could have... Um a, a, a child who is really, really bright, but has autism and can't communicate well, but is extremely functional in, in other areas. Yes. How, how do you detect, how do you, how do you as a parent, how do you detect uh, autism and, and what are you looking for in the signs and, what are you, and, and how do you detect the strength? Okay, well, with autism, like I said before, it's a spectrum mm -hmm. disorder, so it's like a rainbow. So think of a rainbow. We have from low functioning to high functioning. And under, under the autism spectrum disorder, you have five different developmental disorder. Asperger's, like you mentioned earlier, is high functioning, very, very smart, keen talent and strength and interest, probably in math probably in animals, in music, in arts, but where they lack is the social interaction with mm -hmm. friends. So they don't take figurative type of speech. Like if you tell them it's going to rain cats and dogs, they will literally take it as it's going expect, to rain. I'm going to watch out. Animals. I'm expecting <laughs> cats and dogs. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they are great at math and arts and music. Then you have autism where they display autistic behaviors and symptoms such as um, which are red flags and parents should look at as young as six months of age you can see a child 
exhibiting certain behaviors that are not typical for their age group, such as if you call them by their name, they ignore you. They're not giving you that eye contact, that lack of eye contact, that lack of that feedback back and forth, Google, um, smiling back at you, cooing at you. Also the motor skills, you will notice that there is a delay in their walking, in their crawling, in their sitting as well. They have stemming behaviors, repetitive behaviors where they flap their hands or they flick their fingers or they squeal. Those are some um, red flags that you can look at. But as young as babies, look if they're giving you any eye contact, if they're babbling, if they're giving you that feedback back and forth, they're smiling at you. If, if you're not seeing that, then it is an area of concern that you should definitely seek out help. Probably you go to your pediatrician at first and they would normally let you know, um, I'm not seeing this in your baby. I, I think you should go out and seek help. And then we've also got referrals from our neurologists, from our pediatricians, from even our um, Nurse Hodge, the audiologist, she would call and make referrals as well as teachers and parents are making referrals. So we're getting more and more calls. So we have uh, services, uh, autism services here that we can access when we detect uh, some symptoms that we might be concerned about uh, how, how, how much uh, services are provided here for, for to, uh, autism uh, children? Well, they go through a process, of course. Now we're under the social development, so they mm -hmm. go through an intake process. They make the referral first, then they go to the social development and make an intake process where we go and observe the child. We use different forms of assessments. Some of our assessments are CARS and PEP3. We have the childhood autistic rating scale. So we just observe the child and we observe his behaviors in his natural environment because that's best when you're able to detect and right away if we notice that there are some artistic behaviors now we cannot officially diagnose we will recommend for further testing where psychologists and neurologists and clinicians can come and assess the child and mm -hmm. give that official diagnosis after that, they get an observation and we right away provide services for the child. Right now, currently, unfortunately, we're only providing developmental therapy. And early intervention is very, very important as well as giving them that occupational therapy, that speech therapy, that behavioral therapy, even nutritional therapy because children with autism have that sensory deficiency in foods or light or touch or even sound so they therefore they need that nutritional aspect to help them you know cope with the issues that they're going through and these services are available in the center uh, what what do we have in the center right, right now what we have at the bvi autism center mm -hmm. is only behavioral therapy i mean developmental therapy okay. we do provide the assessment but not the speech nor the occupational and that is a big challenge here in the BVI. Okay, And we're looking to improve that through the ministry to bring more services. Uh, is that something that you know, you're talking to uh, the ministry about? Definitely, definitely. In a perfect world, you would not have children with autism. Okay, mm -hmm. in a perfect world, we would want all our children to, you know, be able to cope with society. But children with autism are special. Mm -hmm. They're very special and they keep us challenged and they keep us at our toes. In a perfect world, we would have so many services for our children, but we do not have that right now. Well, do we have any idea of, of uh, causes and cures? That, what, what cause autism? Is there a cure for autism? Can, can children be better with, with assistance? Autism is not like a flu where you give him a dosage of medicine and mm -hmm. he's going to get cured. So there's no known cure for autism. What there is, though, is intervention. The earlier they get intervention, the best outcome that child will have. Causes for autism, then you have your myth where it's like vaccination, vaccination or mm -hmm. genetic or from the father's side, mm -hmm. environmental, so nurture versus nature. Mm -hmm. But there's no research that backs that, no facts that backs vaccination has led to autism. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So we just so we just treat, we just detect, and for now we just detect and we just we just treat. How many um, how many persons and 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 we have a, a, a range a age range of persons with autism, children, young adults. How many how many persons we have detected with autism in the BVI? Right now we have about um, thirty individuals. Young, as young as two years old, mm -hmm. and as old as in the late 40s. Really? That have are on the spectrum. Recently, about a month ago, we were able to detect one child with autism, and that's just recently, in in weeks. I'm talking. And and how do you what 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 family support do you provide? Because as we, you mentioned earlier, it must be a challenge for parents with children who uh, the children are behaving in a, in, a, in a peculiar way that they don't understand uh, they're not familiar with the symptoms uh, and then when they do become familiar you need a lot I suspect that you would need a lot of patience you would need a lot of uh, know-how and skills to deal with your child as a parent what kind of services uh, the center provides in that regard to families it's a financial strain it is an emotional strain to work with a child with special needs or to even care for a child with special needs. What we offer at the center is respite for parents. So during the vacation months that children are off from school, we offer Christmas breaks, Christmas programs, Easter programs, as well as summer programs. So throughout those programs, we provide intensive, intensive developmental therapy, as well as help them with their language skills and their self-help skills. And since now that we're on the the social development, the intake process also helps along with, with finding counseling for the parents and families that are affected by this disability, which is actually the fastest growing disability in the world right now. One in every 68 children has autism. It's more prone in boys. It is actually five times more seen in boys than are in girls. Any, any indication why that is the case? Why autism is, is, on, is a, such a fast growth rate? Is it that it's more detecting? Are we detecting it more now? More people are coming forward? Or more people are, uh, are getting autism? Well, it's, 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 it's many factors. Um, there's more awareness campaign going on. Autism Speaks is a U.S.-based organization. So every April 2nd, you light it up blue around the world. So famous landmarks like the Eiffel Tower and other communities, they light it up blue. So that's a major campaign and it's been growing ever, every year. Also, um, the DSM-5, which is the book that psychologists use, they've now put autism as a spectrum. So if you have Asperger's, you're on the autism. If you have um, PDD NUS, pervasive um, developmental disorder, you're on the, the autism spectrum. So that also is a factor. More and more parents are now coming and mm -hmm. seeking for help. And, and that's one of the challenges that we have here in the BVI. We have parents that are still sheltering their children and are still continuing to be in denial. And I, and I understand that as your child, but the m earlier... It's not like a stigmatism of, of, of embarrassment. Yes, yes, but that's mm -hmm. why we're in this awareness campaign so we can desensitize the public and talk to them about autism, that it is not a disease, it is not contagious. We recently went to Joyce Samuel. I want to thank Mrs. Crab for inviting us. We went to Joyce Samuel Primary School and we spoke about autism. And children ask me, is it contagious? Is it cancerous? Uh, can you cure it? So these are, they're curious and they want to know because they do have a child that's in the mainstream school, very bright child that is, um, that has autism. Okay. Before I turn in the clock, what, uh, what can we expect from our, our, our autism center going forward? Uh, and of course, uh, Stacy. You go first. What can uh, uh -huh. what can we expect from? Uh, uh, I mean, there is a, a, a considerable amount of awareness, but how do we, you know, how do we get the the, the, the trend to reverse? You know, go uh, get a reduction in the in the growth rate. Well, um, it starts from the top, bottom, and also bottom up. Okay, so our policymakers really has to work alongside with us. 
there needs to be an open dialogue between ministries, between administrators, as well as the Ministry of Education. Really and truly, autism, we're working with children in the school system, so we also should have a partnership with the Ministry of Education because children learn best when they're included with their typical peers. You have a nonverbal kid going to a school with other nonverbal children, they're not going to learn. They will learn best with other children that are typical and will help them along their weaknesses and those with weaknesses will help them along their other strengths as well. So definitely open dialogue from ministries above that are policy makers and policy changers. We want to continue with this awareness campaign, radio shows, talk shows, as well as go into the public and the community and do more of these fun days and collaborate again with Mrs. and um, with Stout as well to take that word out and talk about autism. I think that whatever she said, it can traverse on to child abuse. Mm -hmm. But I would add what my colleague said and talk about continue to sensitize legislators all the way down. Um, we have a lot of work to do still as much as we're doing awareness. I want to thank the public and encourage the public. You're wearing your blue pin. Toby, yeah. we have our Drive Blue Wear Blue campaign that is coming, our Drive Blue Wear Blue that is coming up on Friday. I expect to see you in Blue Cromwell. And the public has really bought in. And that is one activity that we will really not get rid of because it's one with a cause. Our survivors um, had, were having a very difficult time in therapy. And it's because of them we started doing Drive Blue Wear Blue and said to the public, we can't share who these boys and girls are with you. But we say to them, you look for those persons who are wearing blue. They think that you are brave. They think that you did the right thing by disclosing. They, don't, they think that this is not your fault. Because sometimes these kids get a lot of backlash for telling. Families are broken apart. Child abuse never have any winners on the prosecution side and on the victim side. So I want to encourage everybody to come out on Friday and do the blue. We expect our legislators all the way down, our kids, to be in blue and encourage each other. We have our march. We started with a march on April 1st. We're ending with one. Seventh-day Adventist Church have agreed to partner with us so on Saturday. Um, myself and a colleague from Autism will be talking with the persons at Seven Day Adventist and we'll be doing a march on, on Saturday as well. So I want to thank you again for always being gracious and having us mm -hmm. and continue to help us with our fight yes. in our causes. Well, like you add, I have to chat space. Okay, um, <laughs> as well as not <laughs> only public sector is responsible, mm -hmm. but also the private mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. So we're having a blue fashion show sponsored by Omi on Friday, which mm -hmm. is this Friday, April 29th. So I asked the that'll public. And that will be in front of Omi. Yes, Omi's and store. they will wear blue because that is also the um, autism color blue. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. And uh, you uh, you don't use me often enough, and you know you could come anytime. You of got course, things, you got of things course. developing, new things coming up. You want to promote? I don't hear from you. I don't see you. Yeah, sometimes so. I just send Miss Mrs. Fred. How about that? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I just want you to know the same uh, the same invitation I extended to the tourist board. You ought to have the same oh, invitation. Thank you. Thank so you, you so come much. Anytime. If persons want, let me just say this real quick. I know you have mm -hmm. to go. If persons want shirts, they can call directly at Crazy Threads. You don't have to come through our office. Crazy Threads relocated in um, Friday in case they want to wear the Break the Silence shirt. They could go directly crazy to Crazy Threads. threads. And yeah. also, parents, <laughs> parents as well, if you have any concern, please call the center, 468-3672. We're here to help. Great. Thank you both for being my guest. Thank, Thank you for having us. A lot of information and continue the good work. Thank you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to come back with Brother Mead Malone. We're going to talk about the Entrepreneurship Forum coming up this weekend. Don't miss it. Stay right here. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands and CCT Global Communications.